Man, people are asking me all the time, hey Chris, Airbnb, vacation rental, like should I buy a property like that? I've got a buddy who's making bank. And you know what, today I'm gonna share with you my personal opinion about buying oceanfront, beach property, vacation rentals. Is it a good idea or not? One, 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 one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. I'm turning dreams into reality, yeah. It's one all one shot, now the future for sure, let's go. Man, it's pretty exciting. The whole idea of owning like beach property, a vacation rental, man, you could literally be there and use it anytime you wanted. You could make money with it. This idea gets people really, really excited. And you know what? Sure enough, there are some people that are making a killing with this notion. There's others that are struggling and some people are even losing the shirt off of their back. So is it a good idea or not? We're gonna find out. Man, I'm not gonna lie. I sometimes wish that I could take a pile of cash and like get in my DeLorean, go all back to the future part two in style. And um, like wind up in Florida, California 30, 40 years ago and buy like a prime piece of real estate for super, super cheap knowing what's happened to it. I mean, you understand that like properties that are like beachfront, really nice locations, popular destinations, those properties have taken such a hike in value. They've gone up and up and up. Now some of these beachfront properties, it's like you can get a little shanty for a million bucks. How cool would it be to actually own something like that? Could be super dope or it could be kind of stupid. Check this out from Investopedia. Buying a beach house can bring an excellent return on investment, a reliable income stream, and access to a delightful vacation spot. Very artistic. Many beach house investors purchase homes that they subsequently rent out during peak tourism times. Literally, I just had a friend last week that was having a conversation with me and said, hey Chris, can you do the numbers? I have a chance to buy this house for $1.4 million. I'm gonna have a $10,000 a month mortgage. I know it sounds pretty crazy, but I can rent that place for $2,000 a night. And if I just have it rented for five, six, or seven days, it'll pay for everything. And then imagine if I like went there the other two or three weeks if I wanted to, and I could live there for free. Or just rent it out for more and even make more money. You gotta admit, like the whole notion of it sounds super exciting. So there are three major benefits that you get if you own vacation property. Number one is there's a stream of income. And whereas if you rent a single family home and are going for two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars of positive cash flow, your positive cash flow on the right vacation property could literally be thousands of dollars extra a month on a property. Number two, it's a short rental time that you need to actually cover the cost of the entire year. A lot of these places, if they're just rented out for 10 days out of the month, it covers all of the expenses. So if you're rented out anywhere from day 11 through day 30, we're talking profits or check out benefit number three, access personally to a really nice vacation spot. There's a lot of people that are into this because they're looking for an excuse to travel. So what is it that actually keeps people out of this game then? Well, as you might imagine, these homes tend to be pricier, right? They're more expensive. 10 million, 10 million, 10 million dollars, 10 million, 10 million, 10 million dollars. Beach house properties are subsequently pricier than similar homes that are located inland. Check this out. The interest charges can make a huge difference to an investor's bottom line. For example, the principal and interest payment on a 30-year note for $1 million mortgage with an interest rate at 4% comes to $4,774 per month. However, let's just say on that exact same property that you were borrowing a million dollars at 5% instead of 4%, well, you're now gonna go up $600 to a cost of $5,368 a month. That $600 for just one interest point higher is really eating into your profit margin. Now I gotta tell you, we are currently sitting on a 50 year low in mortgage rates. So if there ever was a time to consider doing this, it'd definitely be now. On the other hand, we are coming off of a pandemic year and last year you really couldn't rent anything out almost period. So a lot of those Airbnb places really like took a bloodbath. Gotta tell you, every time I travel somewhere with my in-laws, they look at the lay of the land and if they like the area, they start looking at properties and crunching numbers and wondering, could we rent this thing out for 10 days out of the month to pay for everything? And you know, is this an all year round like tourism area or is this like a, a high season of three months out of the year? Well, let me share with you the three cautions that I always bear in mind when I'm actually looking at beachfront property. Here's the first one. 
You got to take beachfront insurance into account. For example, the homeowner's insurance on a beach house is likely to be several times more expensive than the coverage for a primary home. This cost difference is mainly due to often mandatory flood insurance. A yearly premium of $10,000 or more for flood insurance is increasingly common for Florida beachfront homes. So just be aware that when you buy this property, aside from just the cost of the mortgage, the interest on that principal, you are gonna have these other costs like the insurance. Then you've gotta take property management into account. You might be thinking, Chris, property management, right? Those guys just charge you know, your standard 10% when they're renting things out. You know what, that is true on single family homes. That is not true when you get into vacation real estate. I own this property up at Sundance. I was gonna build a house on it until I found out that to get it regularly rented, the property manager there that basically ran that whole joint, they were charging 30 to 40% every single month on the gross rent that they collected. It was almost like they were like part owners in the project. I mean, can you imagine that if you collected $20,000 in rent, that I would owe them six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 a month? It's not 10%. Look at this. Property management involves a lot more than signing lease agreements and collecting rent checks. When something breaks, such as HVAC unit or a refrigerator, the beach house owner is wholly responsible for the repairs. The landscaping, painting, the roof maintenance, and pest control represent just a few of the other tasks that fall under a beach house owner's purview. Property management on specialty properties can be as high as 40% of the gross rent charged. So before you go into this model, you should ask, what is Airbnb charging? Or if you're in an area where people use different property managers, understand that you can't assume that it's gonna be 10%. Chances are, it's not. And there's a third cost that you need to take into account. You see, when renting a beach house, it involves costs above and beyond the mortgage, the utility, the cable. For one thing, you've gotta look at the taxes. Usually taxes on, on those type of properties are significantly higher. They're hefty given the high value of many beach houses. And if the beach house is an income property, homeowners must typically pay for the marketing and the advertising. That's frankly why at that Sundance property, it was 30 to 40% because I, I needed to fit the bill for their marketing and advertising. So it's not as simple as just owning a single family home. There's a lot that can go right, but honestly, there's a lot that can go wrong. Ultimately, you've got to ask yourself, is beachfront property right for you? And you know, I get asked that question a lot. I'm going to share with you my, my own personal opinion on it. When I'm known for buying all these single family homes, it's because if you look at my last 100 homes or my last 1,000 homes, they all look the same. You and I are not so different. And that's by design. You see, I'm not into this, oh, look at this cute little duplex. We could turn it into a triplex. Maybe if we work with the city, what do you think of this fourplex? Ooh, this property is unique. Check out the district that it's in. I'm not into that kind of real estate because it's very difficult to like develop predictability and a track record. I like, frankly, my real estate to be boring because it, because it comes down to three letters. R-O-I, return on investment. Beachfront property done the right way, you can make way more money than you could buying single family property. But you know what? Unless you really fully understand it and hack the system and work with a team that maybe has track record in it, most people I meet, they don't have a track record. They have a one-off or they have two or three of these properties or they've got five and some are working and some aren't. And for me, I'm just not that kind of risk taker. I like to earn my standard stock loaded 25% to 30% every year, year over year on my money. I've got to eliminate some of the variables if I want my real estate to become boring and predictable and frankly maximize that kind of money. I guess at the end of the day, you could say that there's definitely some Airbnb owners out there, some vacation rental property owners that probably came in with a heavy chunk of cash all on very few units. And there's a chance that they're just making a killing on their cash flow. And you know what? I'm really, really happy for them. I think I've just met too many people that have one result that they couldn't duplicate on another project. And that just introduces too much risk for me. You see, part of making money is just getting in the game to double digit ROI. When you go from single digit ROI, which is you know 401ks, IRAs, S&P 500 kind of stuff, and you go from your average market 6% to something like 25%, well, that's four times the return. But over 20 years, it's 27 times the money. You can take a mere, what is it, $50,000 right here and parlay that into $4.3 million with minimal taxes period on that whatsoever. And so for me, that's why I'm sticking with my single family game. Today, do I own any beachfront property, vacation property that isn't personally owned just for me? 
I don't. And it's not something I advise to someone as they're getting in the game unless they're super experienced and they're willing to take heftier risks. If you're looking for a more intelligent, dependable return and you just want your money to grow really, really fast, click the link below and learn about partnering with me. I'll take you into some very exciting numbers that have really huge ROIs, but they're not gonna be beachfront properties. They're going to be American dream real estate, homes that people wanna buy, own, and live in in the top three markets in the entire country. In my last 5,000 homes that I've done in those markets, I've turned into not a little bit of money. So if you wanna learn about that game, click the link below and I'll show you how to play like a pro. Take it from me. If you wanna do real estate like a pro, you need a guidebook on how to do that. And right over here, I made a video that is the ultimate guide to how you do real estate investing. Check it out. Those values have like shot through the roof. Scorch, baby. I wasn't feeling it. Yeah, all right.